because I have seen many of you Olympic blame on Governor Wycliffe Oparanya. Governor Wycliffe Oparanya, and I agree with those of you who have described him as incompetent, somebody not deserving of leadership, the man is ind indefensible. That much I agree. But the truth of the matter is that this blame on the challenges that county governments face in this day and time lies squarely in the men and women that were in that room in State House yesterday during that particular meeting. From the President to the Chair of Council of Governors and even our own leadership. When I saw photos, Mr. Speaker, that there had been a meeting between the leadership of Senate, Council of Governors and the President, the first thing that I looked out for, because I knew that this issue of agreeing on how to share revenue among its counties was going to be a long drawn out battle. I knew that at least if there would be goodwill on their side, they would have given a communication on what is going to happen in our counties in the interim as Senate tries to find a solution to this particular problem. The truth of the matter, Mr. Speaker, and let us not lie to the country, is that someone is trying to blackmail the Senate. Somebody wants the Senate to look bad, that it is us who have starved counties of cash. Don't fall victims into this silly trap and begin to blame Governor Oparanya. Governor Oparanya is just an errand boy. The person that we need to ask the right question, CS Treasury, why haven't you released funds to counties? Mr. President, you met Senate leadership yesterday. Why don't counties have money? Those are the people that we need to be asking these questions. Because Supreme Court gave an advisory opinion on what happens when there is a stalemate on CARA, such as the issues that is before this particular house at this particular time. So, let us not pussyfoot about these issues, trying to call governors saying, oh, they are thieves. We understand how crooked each of the 47 governors in this country is. But the problem and the issue that is being discussed right now before this house is, number one, we are in September, the 15th. We are almost finishing the first quarter of these financial years, and counties have not received their monies. The question is, why are we not calling for CS Kuryatan to either resign or do that which is expected of him. I agree with Senator Mutula Kilonzo who has said that we must discuss the conduct of CS Ukuri Atani because he's in, the, in violation of our constitution. What he's doing is not lawful. Counties should have received their funds, formula or no formula. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, if we are genuine in our calls that counties deserve to get the monies that are due to them at this particular day and time. Let us have a motion, a central motion tomorrow, tabled by the leadership, discussing the conduct of the CS for Treasury. Let him tell the county what is it that is stopping him from releasing funds that are due to our counties. Mr. Speaker, it saddens me to see people want to reduce a very important national issue, such as the shareable revenue formula that is before this house, and want to play games and political issues about it. Yet we know that the reason country, countries fight, the reason countries disintegrate, is squarely on how you share resources in that particular country. The reason I want to blame the leadership of the Senate, Mr. Speaker, is because I want us also to tell Kenyans the truth, that the reason this House hasn't been able to reach a decision is because we have not been presented with an opportunity to vote. This is a democracy. It's not a monarchy. We don't have to agree on anything. How we have solved issues in a democracy is that after allowing the minority to have their say, the majority must have their way. The truth of the matter is that there are those of us who have caucused, and in our thinking we think we have secured the requisite 24 delegations to support a shareable revenue formula. But the leadership of the Senate has frustrated our efforts to bring a vote on this particular House. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, if we are genuine, if we are honest, if we believe in devolution, let us begin by first being honest, calling out the people that were in that meeting yesterday and asking when are funds going to hit the accounts of our counties.